giving you a voice. Making it loud our own way. Welcome, Welcome to, to the fun. fun. First updates now, FRC is produced in partnership with the Blue Alliance. Keep up to date on all live and archived FIRST Robotics events and team stats at thebluealliance.com. And by viewers like you. We need your help to keep fun at loud, live, and independent. Help us by visiting our Patreon to pledge your support at patreon.com forward slash first updates now. You can also support fun live on Twitch for a few bucks a month or by linking your Prime account for free and clicking subscribe. Coming at you live from quarantine. Hey, everyone. Ooh. Welcome back to First Updates Now, Nor'easter Region Recap. Even though we don't have events for the rest of the spring season, we're still going to be bringing you the content from teams and updates on how our region is doing. This week, we're going to be reflecting on how Northeast did this season and some of our top highlights. Reporting for First Updates Now, I'm Audrey. I'm Ben. I'm Kevin. And I'm Connor, and I'm on spring break. Good to have you back on, Connor. Awesome. <laughs> uh, extended spring break. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Before we get into this, uh, we do have a giveaway for y'all this evening. So, Tyler, can you tell us some more about that? Yeah, our friends from uh, Analog Devices are back once again. Guys, great time to learn about new stuff for your robots if you haven't already. And here's your opportunity to do so with the ADIS 16470 IMU board. Uh, we've been talking about these for a while. Analog Devices has been really sweet in supplying just some awesome giveaways throughout the years. Uh, but this is a next generation IMU designed for dem demanding high impact applications like those seen in FRC. Lots of teams are using this as their IMU of choice. Uh, so make sure you check it out to get an opportunity. Analog.com forward slash first. Uh, they also have a wiki you can do. We'll be giving this away a little bit later on uh, during the show. Uh, and hopefully um, our viewership counts don't count towards quarantine numbers because uh, we hope they're really good now. All right, moving on. Uh, with that said, though, everybody, we, we really do appreciate you joining us. Uh, we know that everybody's down a little bit uh, from last week, and we hope to cheer you up with just some great, great talks and uh, lots of great content moving forward the rest of the year as well. So keyword a little bit later on during the show. Yeah, the IMU would be really great to get into now that you have the time to with the uh, season cancels. So anyway, let's uh, get into our season recap. <laughs> let's start with uh, what were some of your favorite teams that you saw play this year focusing on our Northeast region? Kevin. So I saw a whole bunch of teams uh, up at the Granite State District when I was there and then on streams during week two. And... I'm going to start with a sleeper pick because I just really loved watching 35-66 Gone Vision. They made great showings there. One of the few teams that got to play twice this year. Uh, they had good showings at Granite State and Waterbury, and they could have made some noise at District Champs. Um, I love when I see teams go from, like, decent showings to great robots. Last year, Gone Vision went unpicked at Granite State, and then this year they were a great catch in Alliance Selections, and they made a big <laughs> splash <laughs> in Elimination. <laughs> Uh, and then they made the finals on the number two seed at Waterbury as well. Uh, my absolute favorite, uh, they're not from New England, but it's a uh, 44-14 high tide out of California. Just a simple high goal robot uh, and climber with easily the most beautiful machining that I've ever seen in FRC history. You got to go check out the reveal video. Uh, but as for my favorite in the Northeast, uh, it's a, definitely a team that everyone should be watching out for as they're gearing up to be one of the top teams in the New England district. Uh, they started off as a rookie in 2017, winning their first event in rookie all-star at district champs. 2018, they won another event and their first chairman's award. 2019, they won two events, but they were the second pick at both of them. And they won the EI at district champs. I'm talking about a little team from the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, Team 6328 Mechanical Advantage from Littleton, Massachusetts. Just a super simple over-the-bumper intake, V-shape hopper, fixed shooter with an adjustable hood, and dual telescoping arm cl uh, climber. They just shot their way up to a district finalist and a chairman's award at Northern Connecticut. Uh, if you haven't seen their build blog on Chief Delphi, you are missing out big time. Uh, David Power is one of our hosts here on the Northeast Recap. He's been spearheading that. It's a great read, and this is a great time for you to read it because we don't have a lot of robotics going on right now. And uh, the uh, the machining and powder coating is just absolutely gorgeous. 
And just to highlight one of their chairman's efforts, they put a care package to all the New England rookie teams, and they drove out to everyone's shop and, and gave them that care package, which that's, that's wicked awesome. They did wicked that awesome. pre-quarantine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're really cool. Yeah, shout out to Dave, one of our hosts. But uh, my absolute favorite team to watch this year uh, didn't actually play in our region. They played down in Palmetto, uh, but they're actually undefeated. 15 0 and 0 Stipals, 694 from New York, New York. They've got this lightning fast intake. They shoot from the edge of the protected zone at the front. They're really tall robot, um, and they started out really slow. So slow, they uh, didn't actually move in their first match. They missed auto in their second, but by their third, they had really kicked it in. Six to seven balls in auto, 20 balls in teleop. They look like they know what they're doing when they drive. They seeded first. They took the regional. Absolutely incredible play from 694. Loved watching them. Ben? Awesome. Thanks, Audrey. Um, so <laughs> I, I have to go with uh, Team 1807, Redbird Robotics. So they were really close to clinching the number one seed at Hatboro Horsham, ultimately one climb away from the finals and having a chance of winning the whole competition. Just my litmus test looking at the robots in the field, how they drive, how they play. I'd say they're probably the best robot in the region that actually played this year. Um, they're super, super low robot with a super fast shot and excellent driving. Um, so there's a few other amazing teams hope to see eventually as, as these off season events, hopefully happen like 747, 1923, um, that haven't revealed yet. Um, wouldn't be surprised if we get to see them in off season this year and hopefully we do. Um, but like I was saying there, Redbird Robotics, really great robot. Um, very proud of them for having made it work for a second time in a row. They're showing that they're not just a one hit wonder. Yeah. Rob 2168 in chat mentioning 176. They're an absolutely incredible machine from, uh, new England. And I think they're a little bit worth mentioning too. <laughs> and we'll certainly talk about them later. Absolutely. All right. So moving on for our next topic tonight, uh, you know, not a whole lot of events happened in the Northeast. In fact, they're only like one, two, three, four, five events that happened in the Northeast. <laughs> uh, four of them were in the New England District, one in FMA, uh, zero in in New York, unfortunately. Uh, but uh, uh, what are some of your favorite events that we watch? Uh, chat, uh, let us know as well. What do you think? Uh, Kevin, start us off. Uh, I loved, I was at Granite State, and it was really evenly matched. No, none of it played out the way you'd expect it to either, because the top seed was 4905 and 133, and they were strong, but everybody expected the second seed of 5687 and 1519 to win win the event, because they're two powerhouses, they both were kicking it, like, hitting their stride on Saturday, or Sunday, uh, no, Saturday, <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, and then the third seed of 4909 and 501 was pretty good. But they were inconsistent. And then the fourth through seventh seed all had clear, identifiable flaws. But what followed was a wild bracket. The seventh seed took out the second seed in an awesome set of quarterfinals. The fifth seed beat the first seed in semifinals. And the third seed beat the fifth seed in the finals. Uh, there was a lot to learn about the game as it was one of the first events. And there was a lot of really exciting matches that left me clamoring to watch more Infinite Recharge. Yeah, so... Um... Going down a little bit south in the New England district, uh, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the uh, Northern Connecticut event. It was just super strange, to say the least, and it was, which is why it makes it my favorite event, not just talking about how bad the venue was, just bad pits and bad stands. It was not good. Um, but it definitely showed that getting the climbing ranking point was super critical, and it showed that some teams uh, soared high in the rankings that you normally don't see seeding high, like 67-23 and Team 61, respectfully rank one and two at the end of quals. Um, but a lot of team, a lot of people like to see a good underdog sometimes, and if you like that and you watch this event, you were more than satisfied. One, two, and four seeded alliance got knocked out in the quarters. Uh, that's not something that you normally see a lot uh, that happens in normal district play. You don't see that until like the championship. And a good example of that is the Curie 2016 division where the entire bracket was backwards. Seven and eight were in the finals in that division. 
Um, it was the number three and number five seed that squared off in the finals where five ultimately took it to uh, two matches. And Alliance five proved that early in an event, if you can consistently get that triple climb, uh, you will more times than not be golden. And they knew that they didn't have the scoring capabilities. And if you look at the OPR, 11.53 and 63.28, they were the top two highest scoring robots. And then the Alliance captain and the first and second pick, they were somewhere in the um, past the top 10. So they knew that they needed to get that triple climb. And if they were lined up uh, right before 30 seconds and they could, they had plenty of time to get it, they would be golden. At, uh, at GSD, the finalist alliance that we really weren't expecting to see there, Alliance 5, got a triple climb in every single one of the matches they won in elimination. They out, out climbed their opponents the whole way through. And that was how they made it. Even though they could not shoot as well as one, two, three, four, six, or seven. Uh, oh, mm. yeah. And like Connor, that fifth seed, uh, not that you would know anything from being on it or anything, you know. <laughs> no idea. Oh, hey. yeah. The flex, you know. <laughs> yeah. uh, so, anyway, my favorite event um, wasn't actually an official event because you know no new york events uh but i was actually able to go to the week uh kind of week 0.5 rochester rally this year and that was really neat from my perspective um well run use of a one day kind of preseason event that gave teams time to test their robot on a full unofficial field being able to see the effects that no bag had on rochester's middle of the pack kind of teams close up before the competition was really really cool um Personally, I'm going to talk about three teams here that all stood out for different reasons. 1551, I've been talking about them all season, and we didn't get to see them play out, but the amount that they played at Rochester Rally was absolutely great. Uh, no bag allowed them to tune their robot better than any past year, and even their auto. Uh, another team I want to mention, 1511, Rolling Thunder. They have never really built a good flywheel shooter type robot. Uh, they opt for low goals whenever possible, but this year they've reached higher than they have ever reached before. Not only going for the high goal, but they also had a turret. Uh, and they were hitting a few shots at Rally, and then they were able to compete with some of the best robots there at Miami Valley in Week 1. First pick of Alliance 6. It was really, really fun to watch them switch from like tuning on the field at Rally back to the pit and see their progression and progress. And that's really why I enjoyed this event so much. Every team came in with basically no practice and left with a robot ready for competition. And no team showed this more than 4093. 4093 Hardwired is a single event team from Rochester that has missed playoffs for the past few years. At Rally, they came in with kind of a bucket of a robot and left where they were hitting shots left and right. They were hitting shots in auto and just they completely surprised me with how well that robot looked. Rally comes down to being my favorite event this year because it got me really excited for the season. No bag, and the teams in our area really stepped up to the plate. I hope that the teams continue to improve by the time that they get to compete this season, but, you know, we'll see. I'm excited for next season, too. 4093 is one of those teams that every year at Finger Lakes, they were just outside the top 24 in our pick list. They were always, like, number 25, 26, 24 on the pick list. And where you were like, okay, we'd, we'd be okay playing with them. You know, they were competent. And uh, it was really cool to hear that they were hitting shots and they built a really good robot. So, Yeah, they got me really excited about the season. Well, awesome. Um, so FMA had one event this year, Hatboro Horsham. Um, it was really fun to watch. Um, with 3314 Mechanical Mustangs, 1807 Redbird Robotics, 365 Mo, they were all jockeying for the top of the standings. So the teams were very evenly matched there. Um, with no one, you weren't seeing the amazing level of play that we saw at, say, Great Northern or LA North. But um, having an event that had the first backup, having a climber when you, you only have maybe 35 teams at the event, um, it went pretty deep. So it was exciting to watch the qualification rounds, especially. So given another five weeks, I'm sure these teams would have been incredibly strong at the district championship event. So the semifinals, they were super gripping with 1807 and 1640. They only lost out making the finals by one climb in the second semifinal match. The Alliance was probably the favorite to win it all after the quarterfinals there. Um, fortunately, they couldn't quite think it through. 
Several great teams uh, showed up here that would have had exceptional robots later in the season. We got 365, who we talked about already, 5895, first pick overall at the event, 1807, 1640, 2607, 3314, 1218, 708, 103, 2539. The list goes on. Basically, Hatboro Horsham was like a who's who of like everyone who's really good in FMA. Um, so hopefully we'll have a chance to see many of these teams play with the robots later on. Aside so, from one team, right? Yeah. <laughs> well, no, we, there was also like 707 and 1923 also haven't played. So there's okay, quite okay. a few. Yeah, there, there, there's a few good robots. You know, 25's had a, quite a few good years. They haven't played either. So there, there's uh, 1676 also. We haven't seen Pascag. Mm, they mm. put out a reveal video, I think, today. I was well, watching we, earlier. Yeah, we, we do have that. We haven't seen them play play. Yeah. But yes, yeah. they, they, uh, they, they did put out a reveal video. Yeah. Yeah. So now that the season has ended, what's everyone doing now? now? Um, what do you want to talk about? Um, Wyndham 3467, we just finished our competition robot. It's got a nice powder-coated chassis, and we had a bunch of drive practice and auto work this past week to get it ready to play. Uh, we can't meet right now, but there are plans to do some CAD and design training with interested students online and on shape, and to get our programmers working on vision and path planning especially since those are going to be really transferable skills for future seasons. Uh, for our 166, we're just kind of taking it easy right now. Just like Wyndham, uh, our school district is pretty much going completely online until at least April 3rd. So it's kind of hard to meet in person, but we are doing some virtual things. Uh, we're working on an off-season project right now. It's a little sideways, but I think we can strafe around it. Um, our software <laughs> team is... <laughs> ah, yeah. Our... Uh, our software team has been cleaning up uh, code. It's actually, they're actually trying to host an online code review party uh, where teams can submit their code and other teams can review and they can learn from each other. And also we're working on cleaning up our current robot CAD for 2020 and hopefully to share it with the community. Awesome. Uh, so there's a bunch of stuff that's going on um, with 225 and my other team is 2041. Um, one thing is filming for reveal videos. Um, 2041 is probably going to release earlier than 225 just based on when filming got done and uh, how things are structured there. But we'll we'll see. Hopefully both those teams uh, can get a reveal video out. Um, we're trying to figure out when we uh, when we can meet again, obviously. Um, we're all kind of, you know, chilling in quarantine for now, waiting it out. You know, eventually we're, we're you know, the, the, you know, it, the, there's fun stuff to do here. You can still <laughs> chat and things like that. But, you know, eventually we'll get to the point that we can all get together and meet again, and which is, you know, part of the really fun part of this. This whole community is all getting together and working on stuff. Um, so uh, some off-season event planning. Both uh, both teams are mulling over doing off-seasons this year, both doing them and hosting them. So, um, you know, obviously we have to wait to see how things how things shake out. But. Um, you know, it, it, there's, there's lots of fun stuff to plan and then you just kind of have to wait and see if you pull the trigger or not. Um, and then obviously the usual admin stuff like recruiting sponsors, reconciling expenses, insurance, all the, that stuff that needs to get done, um, at the end of the season. Yeah, that sounds, that sounds like a lot of fun. Yeah. Oh yeah. Um, so I'm not currently with the team, but I'm definitely busy trying to deal with all my college classes moving online for the rest of the semester. Um, so Tyler, it seems like has a comment. So well, let I, him interrupt I, here. Yeah. I mean, it, we finally have an opportunity to do this, but I just want to give a huge shout out to Hey, it's Leo who has gifted 51 subs this month. Holy <laughs> crap, man. Uh, and put us over another tier to, uh, get another emote as well too. So, oh, wow. uh, guys, you might have a new sub. You might even be able to see a new channel in our discord. Um, so thank you so much to Hey, it's Leo. I'm um, in others as well too. Red leader, uh, three, four, two gave a lot of subs. Uh, as well, Matt Boehm gave a whole bunch as well, too. Um, you guys have just stepped up really huge uh, to help support the fun community. Um, you know, it's a crap time for everybody right now, but we all come together and do some pretty awesome things. So thank you so much to Hates Leo and everybody else who's uh, keeping fun, wild, live, independent, and supporting the community. Thank you, guys. Yeehaw. So awesome. with that, we're going to move on to our region's top 10 of the season. So these are the top 10 Northeast teams as voted on by Northeast voters. Mm -hmm. And so who do you guys think was uh, underrated? Connor, you want to start us off? Yeah. Um, yeah. So I know they're pretty down low in the rankings in our top 10. 
but uh, 319. I hope they, uh, Big Bad Bob out of Alton, New Hampshire, hope they make the 25. Uh, simple tall robot executed beautifully. Uh, they had a little bit of trouble at the beginning of Granite State, but they started to dial it in. And I can't, if we get to see this robot compete, it's certainly going to turn some heads. Got to see them at their practice base last week, my team and them. We are going to go to Tech Valley and compete with each other. Um, and hopefully we'll be able to see something out of them later in the season. Yeah, so my comment is this is all New England. Where is New York? We had two undefeated teams compete, 694 and 340. So I really hope we see them in the big top 25 list so that other regions can make up for what New York didn't vote for. Yeah, you might want to check tomorrow. Check back tomorrow, guys, on this. (laughs) Yeah, so to Tyler's point, uh, Mar had one event and New York had none. So there might be teams like 340 and 694 in the top 40 if people from other regions voted for them. Uh, like Ohio and Palmetto area. So. Yeah, we'll see. Um, but there, there uh, I, I don't, I don't have a whole lot of hope. But I hope that maybe we see them. Eighteen oh seven, fifty-eight, ninety-five. They're pro- probably the two bots that have actually play in the FMA right now. So um, good luck to them. Hope to see them on the top twenty-five. Yep. So anyway, we're going to move on to our last segment here. But before that, Tyler, can you put the keyword in chat and let's get our giveaway started? Yeah, we're actually going to draw for this between shows since we're running a little bit behind. But guys, if you're interested in winning the uh, ADS, ADIS 16470 IMU board uh, from our friends at Allen Devices, you're going to type in the following, improve my robot, because that's what it will do. So <laughs> improve my <laughs> robot. Just type that in. That's your chance to win. Uh, subs give five times luck, including if you just got gifted a sub. And you do need to be following the channel as well, but we'll draw between shows uh, for this. So good luck, everybody, and thanks a lot to Analog Devices. All right. All right, so real quick, uh, there's a lot of teams that haven't revealed yet. Uh, I know who I'm looking forward to. Uh, what are you guys looking forward to to see who reveals their robot? I'm looking forward to 1796, the Robo Tigers. They're the one major New York powerhouse that I haven't seen anything of yet. And I'm really excited to see what they build this year. I also hope that 6300 Northwood School Robotics makes a reveal video because they've been on the rise in recent years making some cool stuff. Yeah, um, I'm seriously hoping 125 Neutrons makes a reveal video. They didn't make one last year, but their robots have been absolutely insane. And this year probably is no different. Yeah, I'm absolutely looking forward, forward to two New York teams. 2791. And uh, 870, 2791, Absolute Powerhouse, and 870 builds wacky robots that are absolutely phenomenal. So really hope to see some things from them. Yeah, I'm looking forward to 1923 and 747. So both of them have shown preview videos that basically show really fast shooting, but we haven't actually seen the robots yet. So hopefully they'll release reveal videos and we can see what they built. All right. So since we're going to draw for the giveaway in between shows, uh, we're just going to wrap it up here. Um, So that'll be all we have for you tonight from the Northeast. Thanks for hanging with us. Uh, Fun is once again asking for your help to stay loud, live, and independent. So please consider us uh, giving us a little bit of your support as a treat. You can join Fun Nation with a subscription or bits on Twitch and becoming a Patreon at patreon.com slash firstupdatesnow or really just letting people know that this is the place and quite frankly going forward one of the only places to be to get that fun information that you and your team need. Check us out on Discord, Facebook, Insta, Twitter, and even here on Twitch and our videos on YouTube. So on behalf of myself, Ben, Kevin, Connor, and our producer Tyler, I'd like to thank you for tuning in and thank you to all of our moderators in chat. Our next show is the Sweet Tea Recap and we'll be back next week on your Nor'easter Region Recap. Bye. Thanks for watching. If you want more fun content, be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos. You can also directly help support fun by visiting our Patreon at patreon.com forward slash first updates now or by subscribing at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Thanks to all of our co-executive producers on Patreon and Tier 2 Plus subscribers on Twitch keeping fun loud, live, and independent.